Twirl. Twirl. Twirl for me. Aubrey, go back over this way. I can't see you. I only see Danny. Twirl. Good job. Shut this door. Let's try this again. Just like I got hair in my snow. Good morning. You probably hear my kids' music in the background. Hi, nutcases. Um, wanted to do a really quick video with you guys on laundry in New Zealand. I know. Laundry. Same everywhere, not really. Um, at least I used to think it was the same everywhere, and I got a rude awakening when we got here. So well. I knew certain places it was different, but I figured most places it would be the same. Well, first wake up call is in New Zealand, most washers and dryers are smaller than in the US. In the US, I had like a 12K washer and dryer, and here the biggest I could find locally was a 10K washer dryer. And that was not really in my budget, so I ended up bringing home a 7K washer dryer. So I basically halved the size of the drum when I brought it home. Um, another thing that's interesting is um, dryers here in New Zealand are completely, like you can find the normal vintage dryer. Here's what a vintage dryer is. A vintage dryer is what you have normally at home, or I should say in the US because I don't know where you're watching from. You have in the US a vintage, a vintage, blah, 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 not vintage, vintage dryer most likely. And a vintage dryer is where you take the back and you put that yellow, or not yellow, why did I say yellow? The aluminum foil tube onto the back of the dryer and you hook it up to a vent that goes to the outside of. Someone's here to say hi. Say hi. Mm -hmm. Okay, she doesn't want to say hi. She just wants to stay with me. That is not a nominee. That is garbage. Go throw that away. Isn't it so good? It's garbage. Isn't it so good? Anyways, before we were so rudely interrupted, no, we weren't. She just, she's, she's three. She's not gonna understand. Anyways, a vintage dryer is yes, with the big aluminum tube that goes off the back, and it connects to a vent that's in your house, that will then put a lot of the hot air out of your house. It is one of the, I don't want to say least efficient ways, but it is. It really is one of the least efficient ways to dry clothes. Um, but here in New Zealand, a lot of the houses don't have vents for dryers. They just don't. We were looking at a lot of places to rent, and it's just not a thing. I mean, it's a thing for some houses, but most of the houses we looked at didn't have that. What a lot of people do do here, especially if they're renting, is they will hang their clothes out to dry. They'll put the, and usually they'll have like a place out back. The rent, the peop, the landlord will have a place out back for you to hang your stuff, or you can just go buy a line. Um, we actually have a nice little setup out back for hang drying clothes, but that is even more inefficient than a vintage dryer. One and two, when you have a family of six and your child's yelling that she wants her favorite blankie, it's not really convenient. And well, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a spoiled American and I wanted some convenience. One and two, I got four kids. I don't have time to play around. I just don't. It's life, whatever. Props to the people who can do it. I just was getting frustrated with it and didn't want to continue with that. So we ended up going out the week after we bought our washing machine and buying a dryer. Now, we did not get a vintage dryer because our house that we're currently renting has a spot for a washing machine, and while it does have a spot for a dryer, it does not have a vent. So we were like, what are we gonna do? Well, you have two options if your house does not have a vent. Danny, please don't do that right now, okay? She's playing with my broom. Anyways, um, you have two options for your dryer when you don't have a vented a vent to hook your vented dryers to because you don't want to put a vented dryer in a room 
that doesn't have a way to get that hot air out of the house. Because one, you're going to get lint everywhere, and two, you might get some mold from the heat and water and air staying in your house. That would be bad. So, because I didn't want to get a big mold, have mold growing in my house, I had two options. I could dry, buy, dry, dryers on the brain. I could buy a heat pump dryer, which is the most efficient dryer on the market right now. And a heat pump dryer is basically, what it does is it has a smaller vent and it sucks the heat and air from the outside in. See, a vented dryer just takes the heat that's inside the dryer and pushes it out. This, a heat pump dryer takes the air that's in your area and it sucks it in and it dries your clothes with that, which is really cool. It has this little vent on the front of the dryer that you wouldn't even notice. Sometimes it's on the back, sometimes it's on the side. Sometimes, yeah, but you wouldn't even notice it. So I could do that, which I didn't have two grand to jump the drop on a dryer, so that wasn't gonna happen. But I liked the idea. I liked where they were going with it. The second option I had is what's called a um, condenser dryer. And a lot of places that are islands use this type because they take up less room, they're more efficient than a vintage dryer, and they're, um, they're really easy to use. So basically what a condenser dryer does is it takes the moisture, it uses the air that it has around it, but it takes the moisture that are on the clothes to power itself and it pulls the moisture off the clothes, quite literally, and it dumps it into a what's called a reservoir. And then you empty the reservoir mostly almost every use. Actually every use, it just is what it is. And you make sure that the lint trap is clean when you use one of these. And you make sure that you dump the reservoir before you run alone. And the nice thing about ours is it has a little light that turns on to show you that it's full. I'm gonna show you guys the, uh, now they do tend to be smaller. Heat pump dryers are bigger and vintage dryers tend to be bigger, but um, condenser dryers tend to be smaller. Now I was able to find one that was 7K, seven kilograms. Um, But <laughs> I was, that was on the bigger side. So I ended up paying a little bit more to get this one, but I was happy with the purchase because I don't have to run two loads of drying to every one load of wash. So that's nice. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys ours and show, our, show you guys our washer and dryer. Um, they're pretty straightforward. You know, if you've seen a washer machine, you've seen most of them. Um, will we be getting bigger ones while we're here? I don't know, depends on our financial situation and what happens and if they're available when we go looking for them. But I wanted to show you guys how we use the condenser dryer because if you come, and especially if you're from the US, you're gonna have to get used to this and you're most likely gonna invest in one of these because most of the rentals we've seen, if not all the rentals we've seen, there's no vent. They're just, they just don't make the house that way and that's okay, it's just you have to get used to it. So. Let's show you guys what it looks like. So that is the front of my condenser dryer. Down here is a uh, overflow for the lint trap. So that's kind of nice that they put that. That is where they suck in, That this one does kind of suck in air from outside too. That's also a vent. Um, I wanna show you the inside of the drum. There are clothes in here because I'm gonna show you guys how it works. So these clothes I just put in there. And this is the lint trap which unfortunately there is no way of keeping all the lint out of there at all times, it's just not. Um, but I'm gonna show you how you do this. Okay, so you pull out the lint trap. I'm gonna set it up here. On, there we go, get you guys set up, okay. You pull out the lint trap. This one opens on the top. It's pretty basic and straightforward. I mean, if you've used a vintage dryer, you're probably gonna get this very easy. You wanna make sure you get this part right here cleaned as best as you can. I try to take it once a week. And I don't have my brush in here, but I run a brush over this at least every like third or fourth load 
and you make sure you get as much of the lint off as possible. Um, if you leave a little bit, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. That goes in the garbage. You put the lint trap back in. You're gonna close the door. You're gonna pull this little drawer. Danny, stop. Danny, stop. You're gonna pull this little drawer out and you're gonna pull it out until it can't come out anymore. And at the end, there's this hole. See that, see the blue hole? That's where the water's gonna come out. I'm gonna set you guys back up over here again and point you towards the sink this time. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this reservoir and you're gonna dump it in a sink. Mm -hmm. Or you can dump it outside. I'm not going outside and dump my reservoir every time. So you dump it in a sink. You want to make sure that you get it emptied completely. And then you slide that back in there. And then this, most of the things in, in New Zealand have a yeah, so you hit the power on, you select what you need, which this is delicates, so you hit start. And this right here, let it focus, this right here, where it says full, that will light up if your reservoir is full. And this where it says filter will light up Mommy. if the filter's full. Mom. I know, I gotta throw that out, hold on. Yeah. And there's a child lock on ours too, because we need it. Um, most of the newer condenser dryers have a light that says, hey, your reservoir is full, empty it. So you won't forget. And I have learned that I've gotten a little paranoid about the uh, reservoir being full because you don't want to break your dryer. <laughs> you just don't. You spend a lot of money on it. Let me turn that off for now. I'll turn it back on when I'm done talking to you guys. Um, you don't want to, you, you already spend enough on this dryer. You don't want to break it, so I, you're probably not going to forget. But it's not going to run properly if the reservoir is full. It won't even run. Ours won't even turn on if the reservoir is full. The light will come on and say, hey, Mommy, empty me. And if you try to start Mommy, it with the reservoir full, Mommy, it's not going to run. What? What, baby? Yes, that, we're going to turn it back on. Um, <laughs> but that's basically how you run a condenser dryer. Um, that is most likely the type of dryer you're going to have if you move here to New Zealand. I don't know if your country uses condenser dryers too because you can't find the conde a condenser dryer in the US. You just can't. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure somebody's going to comment below and say yes you can. I've never seen one in the US, okay? But anyways, if your country uses condenser dryers or heat pump dryers, leave a comment down below. Or if there's another type of dryer that I'm missing because I'm so sheltered and don't know anything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know a lot of stuff. I'm just being funny. Anyway, leave a comment down below and let me know. But I wanted to share with you guys because this was new to me, this was odd to me, and I had never even thought or occurred to me to think about what am I gonna do if I don't have a vent in my laundry room because everywhere in the US, there's a vent in the laundry room. So there's that. Um, thank you guys for sticking with me and watching the entire video, and I shall See you on the next one. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and watch us again. Oh, and hit that notification bell. Bing! And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!